All right, guys. Number 11, number 12, and then we're going to do number 13. Yep. Okay. A gumball machine contains 300 grape flavor bowls, 400 cherry flavored bowls, and 500 lemon flavored bowls. What is the probability of getting one grape bowl, one cherry bowl, and one lemon bowl if each was removed and then replaced before choosing the next from the machine? Provide an appropriate response. Express your answer as a simplified fraction unless otherwise noted. So, find the probability of a cherry, well, one cherry, rather, and put it in order, of one grape, one cherry, and one lemon. And if you notice, it says after each time a ball is removed, another ball comes in to replace it. So no matter how many candies I receive, that is always going to be put back before the next selection. Let's find out how many balls are in total in this case. 300 plus 400 is 700. 700 plus 500 is 1,200. There are a total of 1,200 gumballs. in the machine. I am choosing one ball after another and the ball is being replaced. So that means me choosing the first gumball will have no effect on the number of gumballs that are for my second selection because that gumball is being replaced. And that means my second selection will have no effect on the total number of gumballs that is available for my third selection. When the first selection does not affect the second selection or the selections after that, the events are independent. My events are independent such that when two events Two or more events, you can say, are independent. The probability of those events occurring I can't even write good. C C U R I N G is the probability of A and B equals to the probability of A times the probability of B. And the reason why we're using that formula is because these events are independent. You taking one gumball out of the machine does not change the number of gumballs that will be available for the second selection because it says it is re being replaced. So, Let's find the probability of having one grape. The probability of you having one grape. There are 300 grape candies out of a total of 1,200. So that's going to be 300 over 1,200. You must reduce your fractions. These numbers both end with two zeros. So I can simplify that out that gives me 3 over 12 and 3 twelfths can be reduced to 1 fourth let's make some more room down here so that is 1 fourth now if I choose a grape gumball a gumball is then replaced so that means there are still 1200 for my second selection. And the next one is cherry. There are 400 cherries. So the probability of receiving a cherry is going to be 400 out of 1,200. Once again, my zeros 
can simplify to each other out. That gives me 4 over 12. And 4 over 12 can be reduced to 1 third. And last but not least, the last one is a lemon. There are 500 lemon flavored gumballs. So the probability of a lemon flavor is going to be 500 over a total of 1,200. The zeros, once again, simplify each other out. I'm left with 5 over 12. 5 over 12 cannot be simplified any further. So I'm going to leave it as 5 over 12 down here. And then we're going to multiply. We're following the rule of independence. You're multiplying between the events. 1 times 1 times 5 is 5. 4 times 3 times 12. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 12 is 144. Let's divide that. 5 divided by... 144 and the reason why i'm dividing it is because although it says as a simplified fraction but the answer key had it as a decimal let's run it to three numbers after the decimal 0 0.03 i'll take four actually four seven and yep that is the answer to that question Hope that made sense. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's move on to the next question. And let's see, can we understand the difference between number 11 and number 12? Because number 12 says a bag contains 10 white, 12 blue, 13 red, seven yellow, and eight green wooded balls. A ball is selected from the bag and kept, which means you take the ball out the bag and you do not replace it. So for each and every time you go into the bag, there is always going to be one less selection. You keep, but then you draw a second ball and you keep it also. What is the probability of you selecting one white ball and one blue ball? Round your answer to four decimal places. Let's find the indicated probability. So let's first find out how many balls are in total. 10 plus 12 is 22. 22 plus 13 is 35. Plus 7 is 42. Plus 8 is 50. There are 50 balls in total. Now we want to find the probability and be careful what it says here. We want to find the probability of selecting one white and one blue. Now we're going to assume in this case that the order matters. So the first one is white and the second one is blue. Um, so um, assume that the order is relevant in this question. When you are choosing the white ball, you have 50 total balls. But then if you take a ball out and you hold on to it, there is no longer 50 balls left. There will be a total of 49. When the first event affects the second event, the events are dependent. So the probability of A and B, one event after another event, will equal to the probability of event A times the probability of event B given the fact A has already occurred. So in this question, the probability of selecting a white ball first, there are 10 white balls in total out of an overall total of 50. So that's going to be 10 over 50, and that could be reduced to one-fifth. Now remember, if I select one ball out of that bag, there are no longer 50 balls left. There are 49 balls left in total. 
If I remove one white ball out of my bag, the number of blue balls remain the same. There are still 12 blue. So the probability the second one is blue, given the fact the first one was white, is going to be 12 out of 49, which cannot be reduced. We're going to multiply between the two fractions. 1 times 12 is 12. 5 times 49 is 245. Let's divide that and take, let's say, three numbers after the decimal. 12 divided by 245. Oops, what happened here? 12 Oh, it's right up here. I don't know what happened. That's approximately 0 0.049. Because this 8, that 9 will make that 8 run up to a 9. And that's the probability. All right. And let's do number 13. You are dealt two cards successfully without replacement from a well-shuffled deck of 52 playing cards. Find a probability that both cards are black. Express your answer as a simplified fraction. It says without replacement. So that means when you select a card, you do not put it back. So if you want to find a probability of selecting two black cards, that equals to the probability the first card is black and the second card is black. But remember, the second card is black given that the first one was also black. There are a total of 26 black cards in my deck. So the probability that the first card is a black card is 26 out of 52. And 26 out of 52 can be reduced to one half. Because that's half of your deck. Now, suppose if I select the ace of spades. That ace of spades is then removed from my deck because I am not replacing it. Which means for my second attempt, there is now 51 cards left in the deck. And out of the 51 cards, there are a remaining of 25 black cards. I removed one of the black cards out of my deck. So there's 25 black cards left. Removed a card out of my deck. There are 51 cards left in my deck. So we're going to multiply one half with 25 over 51. One times 25 is 25. Two times 51 is 102. And I believe that is how the answer key has that answer. All right, guys, that is it to independent and dependent events. I tried to explain it as much as possible and break it down piece by piece, step by step and give a good explanation of each. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.